Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and in this video we're continuing to create a graph in Unity. We're going to create the Graph Visual Object Interface so we can later update our graph in real time. Let's begin. So our graph is already very capable of displaying anything we give it. We can display any list of values and even change how those values are displayed. I have a bar chart and a line graph. We created those using an interface so it would be relatively simple to add even more different displays. So let's check out the code. And down here we have the interface, the iGraph visual, which is the definition for showing a visual for a data point. Inside we simply have a add graph visual function, which takes in certain parameters and returns a list of game objects. Now this works as we've seen, but it is not the best approach. For example, right now there is no way to update our graph. Since this function returns a list of game objects, we have no idea of knowing what each of them represents. So without knowing that, we don't know how to modify them. So we need to create another interface to handle a single graph visual object. So let's begin by making a private interface and let's call it iGraphVisualObject. Now this represents a single visual object in the graph. So in the bar chart, every single bar will be a visual object. So in here, to start off simple, let's make a function to set the graph visual object info. So a void set graph visual object info, and inside we're going to receive what we are sending in here, the same thing, just like that. So this function will set up the object in the graph. So now let's implement this on our bar chart. So down here, let's make a subclass for the bar chart visual object, which will implement our interface. So a public class, let's call it bar chart visual object, and we're going to implement the iGraph visual object interface. So in order to do that, we need to implement this method in here. So in order to be able to do this, let's make a constructor, so a public bar chart visual object. On the constructor, let's receive a game object for the bar game object, and also a float for the bar with multiplier. Let's store them both as member variables. And on the set graph visual object info, we want to modify the game object to fit these values. So up here, we can see how we are creating the bar. So we're going to need to update the anchored position and the size delta. Everything else is responsible for just constructing the bar. So let's copy these. We need to grab the rec transform, which is of type rec transform, and we get it from the bar game object I get component rec transform. And then instead of the bar width, we have a graph position width, and just like that. All right, so that's the object set up for now. We're going to deal with the tooltip layer. So up here on the bar chart graph visual, when we add a graph visual, let's create a bar game object and then actually instantiate a bar chart visual object, which we're going to instantiate using the bar game object and give it the bar width multiplier. Then let's call the function set graph visual object info and we're going to pass the same thing. So that the graph position width and the tooltip text, okay? Okay, so now let's test and we should be able to see everything exactly the same as previously. And yep, there it is, the bars working exactly the same, I can still modify, everything still works, tooltips, everything. Okay, good. So everything is still working as previously, but now we have a new object that is responsible for handling each specific data point, which in this case means each bar. So with that, we now have the function to easily update it. Now let's modify the graph visual interface. And first of all, let's rename this. Instead of being add graph visual, let's make it create graph visual object, since that's what this will be doing. Instead of returning a list of game objects, let's return a iGraph visual object. So as you can see, we have a bunch of errors in our code, so let's deal with that. On the create graph visual object, let's change the return type to be an iGraph visual object and we're going to return the visual object that we've created in here. So return this, okay? Down here for the line graph, we're going to refactor the line graph later. So for now, just return null. And all the way up here, when we are actually creating, 
instead of adding it to the game object list, let's go up here and make a new list. Instead of a list of game object, let's make a private list of I graph visual object. So the graph visual object list. Let's instantiate it in here and go down here. So in here, instead of adding to this list, let's set to the graph visual object list. So now we are creating a graph visual object from this function and adding it to a list. So we have changed the return type and how this function works, but everything should still be working exactly the same. So let's see. And yep, everything seems to be working. Now if I hit on zoom and yep, as you can see, everything is a bit messed up. Essentially what is happening here is all the bars are overlapping each other since none of them are being destroyed. We need to destroy the old ones whenever we create new ones. Now previously we were doing that by destroying everything in game object list, but since we made a graph visual object we are no longer destroying it. So let's deal with the cleanup. Down here on the graph visual object interface, let's make another function and this will be a void cleanup. This will be responsible for cleaning up whatever game objects this visual object actually has. So then down here on the bar chart visual object, let's make a public void cleanup. And in order to clean up this bar chart visual object, all we need to do is destroy this bar game object. So we simply do a destroy on the bar game object. Okay, so this visual object now knows how to destroy itself. So now we can go up here when we have our list of graph visual objects and up here when we are destroying the game objects, let's also cycle through each I graph visual object, graph visual object, in the graph visual object list and we're simply going to call the function dot cleanup and afterwards we're going to clear the list as we did with the game objects dot clear. Okay so in here we are still cleaning up the game object list which contains as you can see down here all the dashes and labels and then we are cleaning up all the graph visual objects and clearing up the list. So let's test and we should now be able to see the old objects being cleaned up and the graph works again. And yep, here's my graph, everything works fine, I can zoom out and zoom in and everything works exactly as it should. So we now have an object responsible for handling each specific data point, which in this case is a bar, and the only thing missing is to update the tooltip. So let's deal with that. So in here when we create the bar, let's also set up the bar button UI. So down here on the bar, let's add the same thing for the game object, add the button UI, which we're going to use for the tooltip. Now using that, show the tooltip on mouse over and on mouse out, instead of doing it in here, we're going to do it on the site graph visual object info. Let's grab the button UI, bar button UI, which is on the game object, dot get component of type button UI, and do the same thing. Instead of adding, let's just set equals to that much. Okay. So now if we change the tooltip text, it should actually change it. So let's see. And yep, everything looks exactly the same. So right now it might seem odd why we did all of this work if everything still looks exactly the same, but it will all be clear when we actually implement real-time updating. Using the graph visual object that we have created, you can probably guess how we're going to update this in real time. So there you have it. We created an interface to handle each specific graph object. In the next video, we're going to create the inline graph visual object. And after that, we will work on updating the graph in real time. As always, you can download the project files and utilities from unitycodemonkey.com. If you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you next time.